What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Steven Heider, Kate City Sports Channel. Sports Channel, where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. <laughs> Buckle up, guys. This is going to be a... Uh, I'm going to do my best to get through all this information in 10 minutes, but we're breaking down the running game, and I'm going to break it down by quarters for you, downs for you, halves for you, percentages and ratios, like... Uh, it's going to get broken down, guys. We're going to talk about it. I want to talk about some of the remarks that Brandon Grand said on Jacob Media because I think they're they're important, and, and I want to talk a little bit about what's going on here. So to begin with, I think we all recognize that there's got to be a little more commitment to the running game in the first half of football games, okay? In the second half, I think it's a completely different story. I do think we see more of a commitment going on here. And I know that... Like, I'm not trying to imply guys like, oh, this is a philosophy that's only held by this coaching staff. No, there's a lot of coaching staffs that hold the philosophy of throwing it early and gaining the lead in the first half and then running it to protect the lead in the second half. The problem is, is you need to gain the lead in the first half. And it seems like we're only getting back into football games and making the games closer in the second half when we actually establish a run. So we're going to get into all this. So to begin with, guys, I just want to break down some slight differences and things I, I want you guys to know. So to begin with, I'm using Sharps football to get the offensive grouping frequencies. And from that information, you can discern run to pass ratio and you can break it down by stuff. I will say week one is a major problem with Sharps uh, football stats because they had 57 to 55 plays, 57 running plays and 55 passing plays. You guys don't need me to tell you that's clearly wrong. <laughs> it's, it's not correct. Uh, but I will say when you do their total plays, when I broke it down by the game books on the Eagles website, they were a lot closer. I only counted 349. They're counting 350, a disparity one I can live with. But just be careful with the week one because I had to go to the game book to get the accurate information there. So let's just jump right into it, guys. So let's go week by week. So the first thing I remember, guys, is hearing that the San Francisco game, we ran the ball too much and it was a big hoopla. I don't really think you can ever accuse the Eagles of running the ball too much. I think it's a big mistake if anyone did that. But I will say, after looking at all the numbers, it was the only game where we committed to the run more than we did the pass. It's the only of the six. We were, basically we ran a little over 50 plays, about 54 plays in that game. We were 54% run to 46% pass. 25 passes on that game or 46% compared to 29 runs on the game or 54%. Now, mind you, it's probably a little closer to 50-50 because some of those runs from Jalen Hurts are not designed. They're scramble drills. It's probably a little closer to 50-50 when you look at something like that. But since then, you see, what I saw was week one and week two, way more commitment to the running game. Week one, after I broke down the numbers myself, it was 53% to 47% in favor of the pass. 53% towards the pass, 47% towards the run, guys. So basically, 35 passes, 31 runs. You can look at week two, where it's 46 to 54 in favor of the runs early in the season, way more consistent with the, with the running game. And then we fell into trying to trick ourselves into keeping up with high-powered offense. And I think this is where the game plan's let down. This is on the coaching staff. Yes, we get – look, guys, there's there's things in there where Jalen Hurts has got improved. Jalen Hurts is definitely part of the problem. But I can't get too critical on a player when I can see some flaws in the way that you approach the game, especially with Dallas. I thought the play calling and the execution was a lot better in Kansas City. But in Dallas in particular, guys, it got way out of control. And these are the first two games where you're going to notice, and it, 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 there's a generalized trend here. We're over 70% in the pass ratio. Week three against Dallas, 77% pass to 33% run. It's not going to get the job done, guys. 41 passes to 12 runs. Flawed philosophy coming out into that game. There's no way to say that. We, we wanted to try to put up 40-some points instead of trying to get the game into the high 20s or low 30s by having a balanced attack and hoping your defense can make a play when you need to make a play. I thought the game plan and the approach to the game was wrong. Week four, we play Kansas City. We score over 30 points. I did see some positives from Sirianni. I, I could clearly tell that he went back. He consulted the film. He saw the way that the Chargers attacked the Chiefs, and he knew that they had a hard time stopping the underneath route stuff. So he went right to it. But I will say, even in saying that, guys, it's still out of control. Like You, you did part of the game plan very well. You put up 30 points. I'm not criticizing for that. You still got to run the ball a little more than what you did. Um, 73% to 27% was the ratio. It's the second game where we're over 70%. It's in back-to-back -back games. 51 passes to 19 runs. 
this is a high disparity, guys. I mean, we, we just, you know. Then we start to see the corrections coming back to where now we're week five, Carolina, we get a win. 64% pass to 36% run. To me, I still think that ratio is just slightly high. I think you want to be closer to 60-40 in my opinion, but we can see that, okay, they, they started to say to themselves, like, okay, we, we have a problem here. So 39 passes in that game to 22 runs. Some of this stuff, like I said, you have to take into account one or two of those runs are going to be scramble drills. That's just factual. Like, they're called runs, but in reality, they were designed passes. And then week six, uh, last week, guys, we, we fall into a little bit more of a balanced approach here, mostly because of the second half of the game, where you have a 58% pass ratio to 42% run ratio, 26 passing plays to 19 running plays. The biggest disparity I see here is, is that we just didn't have a lot of time on, on offense. And, and I think that's a, a flaw in itself, is that we have to learn how to control the clock against teams that are just basically going to drive the, the field on our defense. We, we've got to learn how to do the same. So what I want to get into is on the season. I counted 349 plays. Um, Sharps counted 350. My percentages came out to 62% pass to 38% run overall. So 217 passes, 132 runs. Sharps football stats has it 60-40. They have 219, I'm sorry, 211 passes, I apologize, to 139 runs, okay? It is what it is, guys. It's my, I think, I think what's coming off the Philadelphia Eagles website is probably a little more accurate than Sharps right now in terms of the total play. So I'm going to say it's more 62-38% versus 60-40, but no point of arguing, guys, over two percentage points. So... Let me break this down now. So we, we know the overall run-to-pass ratio. We've broken it down per game. Let me break it down per down because I think that's important. So to begin with, I wanted to double-check the math on Sharps just to make sure if you're saying you have 350 plays, if I count up all your offense, your, your downs, they should equal 350, and they did. They counted 156 first down plays, 113 second down plays, 72 third down plays, and 9 fourth down plays, which came out to 350 total plays. I was happy to see the math work its way out. Because at least I can trust somewhat of what you're saying here. That's important to me when we're dealing with numbers. I need to make sure you make sense. The generalized trend I see here is more running on first and second down compared to third and fourth down, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. I, I'm kind of a guy that agrees with you run early to set up an easy conversion for third down. So your third down should, generally speaking, unless you're facing third and three or under, should probably be higher in terms of passing. So first down, 156 plays, guys, 58%. Towards the pass, that means 90 uh, dropbacks, 88 attempts, to 42% on the run, 66. Four rushing downs, or four rushing touchdowns on first down, guys. So early on, we were screaming at them, especially in the San Francisco game and some other games, that they were not effective in the red zone and it was costing us games. And then we saw starting in Carolina, they started to actually use Jalen Hurts in the running game inside the red zone a little bit more. We were calling for quarterback sneaks and draws, and I had noticed that the last two weeks. Uh... Second down, 113 total plays, guys, 58, just like on first down, 58% pass, 42% towards the run. So 58-42 percentage here. That equaled its way out to basically 65 passes to 48 rushes, one rushing touchdown on second down, guys. Third down, this is where it starts really skewing. Third down. All right, 72 total plays, 69% towards the pass, 31% towards the run, 50 passes to 22 rushes. Uh, I do believe... I do believe we had, maybe we didn't. I think we had a rushing touchdown on third down, but I could be wrong there. I can't remember. Fourth down, guys, nine total plays, 67% towards the pass to 33% towards the run. So we don't run a lot of fourth down plays. So, I mean, that's not surprising to me. You know, unless you're going for fourth and inches, it's probably going to be a pass. So biggest thing here is six dropbacks, only one completion and one sack, which is obviously that's not good. So that's breaking it down here, guys, from the games well, total percentages and, and total snaps to the, each individual game now to each individual down. Now I want to talk about first half versus second half, right? Because I think that's where the money is. That's that's where the true knowledge can be can be gained here, okay? First half, we've run 159 plays compared to the second half, 191 plays. Number one, the first thing I noticed, guys, is the huge disparity of how many more attempts and snaps we're getting in the second half of football games. Probably because we're running the ball and sustaining drives. Also, it has to do with the defense, guys. When the offense, when another team's opposing offense has put you down into a hole, they're going to play coverage on you. So it's going to allow your running game to be more effective, okay? So first half, 159 plays, 67% pass, 33% run. In my opinion, it's too high, man. I mean, you've got to move this a couple percentage points. 
107 total plays in terms of the pass, dropbacks, if you will, 52 runs, no rushing touchdowns in the first half of football games, which to me is crazy that all six of our rushing touchdowns have come in the second half of football games. we got to get better, <laughs> simply put. Second half, 191 total plays, guys, 54% pass, 46% rush, far more balanced in the second half. 104 passing attempts, or dropbacks, if you will. Uh, nine of our 11 sacks, which I think is interesting to me, nine of the 11 sacks that we've suffered on the season have been in the second half on passing downs. Not sure what's going on there, but I'm assuming there's longer developing plays being called in the second half of games versus the first half where it's a little bit more underneath coverage stuff. 46% on the run, guys, which worked its way out to be about 87 runs, six rushing touchdowns. That's the numbers, guys. That's the pure data, the pure math behind what is happening. All right? Far more running going on in the second half of football games. All of our rushing touchdowns coming in the second half. Almost, you know, nine out of our 11 sacks coming in the second half of games, which is strange. I mean, I need to do more digging there, guys. I'm not going to say anything definitive about that. I need to dig further, right? Uh, we see this one big disparity game, you know, where uh, we, we have the one game where we ran the ball more than we passed the ball, which was San Francisco. But certainly, you got early season, we're running the ball. Weeks three and four, we play high-powered offense. We get way too far to one side of things, and we suffer. And then we start coming back in weeks five and week six, slowly training back towards running the ball, but not in the first half of either game, really. The first half of both of those games, we've kind of hesitated to hand Miles Sanders and his running backs the ball. And... To me, that's the bigger thing is, is we can see when we run the ball, of course, it is against coverage and there's bigger terms to be said here. There's things to talk about in that. But we are having success. There's something Brandon Graham said, guys, as I end this video, I want to talk about real quick before we jump off of here. Brandon Graham made the comment that he feels like, generally speaking, we all view it as, is like, hey, when you have injuries on the line, you typically probably want to run the ball a little bit more because, you know, it's a little easier to figure out who you get your pads on and push. I think we all can agree, though, with one big aspect here, is that the offensive line isn't getting a lot of push when when they're playing against a run defense. You know, we're against coverage, yeah, we're, we're chunking people. But I will say early in games, when we were running the ball like in San Francisco, great defensive line, there's no doubt about that, we weren't getting push. I, I will admit, we, we did struggle to get push. Um, you know, Lane, or Lane, <laughs> Brandon Graham insinuated getting Lane and Brandon Brooks back that's going to do a lot. I mean, he said that he feels like there will be more running plays called when those guys get back in the game and that Nick Sirianni is basically playing to the strengths of the backups that are in the game. That these guys aren't really, they don't have a lot of chemistry in the running game between them because they're being, you know, we're filling in guys once again. And on top of that, these guys aren't particularly good at run blocking. They're better pass blockers. I hope that's not true. I hope that's not the case because whether it is true or not, and, and I'm not going to challenge, you know, Brandon Graham. He's got far more internal knowledge of these guys and, and what they probably are good and, and bad against because he squares up against them in practice. But with that said, guys, like, I still feel like you got to coach them up and, and you still have to give more of a commitment than, like, one, two, three running plays in first half of games. It's just the disparity is too high. And I know we're trying to do other things. If we're having a hard time getting push up the middle, then you've got to do things, man, counters and traps and... You know, you got to use you pulls, sweeps, pitch the ball and get to the outside. Use your guards, use your offensive linemen to get an advantage. <laughs> we have to do more than what we're doing, guys. And I understand that they view the screen game as basically being the same thing as a pitch game. I understand that. And I get the viewpoint. But those receivers out there outside of J.J. Ortega-Whiteside are not doing the greatest job blocking things up. We're getting rocked in certain games. Let's just be real. I don't know, guys. These are my opinions on the stuff. I want to know what do you think. I think we have to to dedicate a little more. I don't think you're ever going to see like 50-50 in the first half of games. It's just, it's just not the way modern football is played anymore. But come on, man. We can't get 65-35, 60, something closer to 60-40. We can't at least make the you know defenses a little honest early in games. We can't try to find a way if we can't get push to get to the edges. At least make an attempt to get to the edges. To use our speed. We can't use the run or the receivers. We can't hit any jet sweeps. Really? We can't do anything, find any creative way of using the running game, whether it's through a running back, the quarterback, the receivers, getting to the edges, getting these guys coached up in, in terms of inside zone blocking and how to attack it. Like, I just don't think, like, sitting here waiting for Brandon Brooks and Lane Johnson, I, I think was a huge mistake, guys. That's my opinion. 
Leave your comments down below, guys. I appreciate y'all. See y'all in the next video.